Okay, now let us continue with efficiency in production and see if we can make some progress here. One, there are three rules. Okay, let me just start by writing efficiency in production. Right, so there are three rules that we need to fulfill here. The first one, we must equalize. Equalize marginal rate of product of, sorry, marginal rate of technical substitution. And these are the slope of the isopans, as you know. And then the second one is that we must equalize the marginal product of labor that's labor i just chose labor because it's one of the factors of production and then the third one is we must equalize the marginal rate of product transformation now i'm going to start it as the previous one because it will be easier for you to recall what we did with John and Mary but here now you must know that what we are doing here is we are in the production side we are in the production side therefore we are producing the necessities and then luxuries so this is exactly what we are producing necessities and luxuries so the firms are trying to produce this and then what happens is one here this firm is producing the first one this firm here is producing what necessities and then the second one here this firm is producing what luxuries so remember when we are dealing with isoquants camps here you will have on, on the vertical x you have what you have capital and then on the horizontal one you have labor and then same thing applies here capital and then labor so remember what we do is we draw the first isoquant curve and i call it what i can just call it um necessity one that is q1 quantity produced one but if we want to produce more remember now we must move to the higher one and then it's neck two necessity two so now you understand that the lower isoquant represent the lower level of production and so on so same thing applies here with the lower isoquant curve here it represents what it represents the lower production of luxury i just call it lux one and then this one here, you call it what? Um, uh, lax two, lax two, lax two, right? So this is lax two. So you understand that now in this uh, production, now the first one shows the production of necessities. The second one shows the, to show the production of luxuries. But you can see that when we increase the production, we actually move our isoquant to the right and so on. So when we decrease, we move it to the to the to the left. And now you understand that. So I'm going to do the Edgeworth box again. So the Edgeworth box here, I'm going to throw the first one for necessities. And can you can see that this will be the origin of necessities. And then I'm gonna label this capital, this one, like that is. And then I'm gonna close it here. And this will be the origin of luxuries. So what happens here is what? Now I'm going to draw this uh, isoquant curves in this Edgeworth box. So the first one, I will draw it like this, is neck one. The second one like this is neck two. So you understand, I mean, this is the same thing. So when I draw the ones for luxuries, the first one, I will draw it here so that there's a tangent here. This is lux 
one. And then the second one, I will draw it here. This is lax two. So we have this point of tangency here, this point of tangency there. So what is happening here is now you have to join the tangency points and the point of origin, and then you have your contraction line again. So look at this. This is E1. This is E2. So now, O neck, O la lax. This is what, this is your contraction line. This is a contraction line. And then any point on this contraction line means efficiency. And when we talk about efficiency, it means Pareto efficiency. Pareto efficiency means what? Means that you cannot increase the one product without decreasing the other product. Because now we are using, utilizing all the resources that are available. If you want to increase the other product, the other production must must uh, 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 um, um, suffer. But if you look at this diagram here already, and, and, and I'm just going to show you. If you look at this production, this uh, diagram here, you can see that at point E1, the slope of the two is the same. So therefore, it means what? It means this diagram helps us to satisfy rule one because the marginal rate of technical substitution is the same. Remember, the marginal rate of technical substitution is the slope of the isoquants. But now, when we get the isoquants for neck, isoquants for legs, now at this point, equilibrium points, they are equal. But now, I want you to know that now all points on this um, uh, 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 contraction line, they represent points where marginal rate of technical substitutions are equal. Right. So now, from here... I'm just going to move and, 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 and I'm just going to move to the second one. I, I want you to look at this when, when I'm moving to the second one because and, and I want to put it here so that you can understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to show you that this contraction line that you see here, O neck, O lax, is actually the production possibility curve. How? And this is how I'm going to show it. This line here represents neck necessities. And this line here represent lax, uh, the luxuries, and then this is the point of origin, right? I want you to look at this. When you look at this point here, the origin of net, it means what? There's nothing for necessities. But if you look at for luxuries, this is the highest possible point of of luxuries. So therefore, this point here is going to be some point. Here on luxuries, okay, you can see that here, and then this one is O neck. That is the origin of neck. So you can see this this point here. And then I'm going to move to E1 now. E1 now here represent little bit. You see now we just increase the production of necessities, but luxury is still too much. So therefore it means what? It means now this point luxury is too much. Luxury is high. So luxury is here. And then, and then, and then, and then, necessity is little bit. Necessity is here. So if you have to get some point here, it's going to be some point like this. So which is going to be a point here. This is point E1. You can see that. More luxuries, and then little bit of necessities. And then if we move to this point here, E2, now you can see that now we've got too much of Necessities, now too much of necessities is here. And then we have two, now two less of like there is, is there. So now we put some point that is lying somewhere here. But if you look at this point here, the original one of luxury. Now luxury is zero here, but necessity now is too much. So luxury is zero, but necessity is too much. So there's some point like this. So if I join all these points, they give me the production possibility here. And to be more um, um, uh, clean and everything, so therefore it means what? It means all these points that are inside the Edgeworth box, but not on the contraction line, they are falling inside here. So that is why now every time when you draw the production possibility curve, we will be drawing something like this, this, and then this. And then we say this is neck and this is lax. 
But now, I want you to know and note that when we look at this, this is what the firm will produce. So if it produces at any point on here, it's fine. It means production efficiency. But now we have to look at the indifference curves because the indifference curves are the ones that are show out what? Um, showing the level of utility or happiness to consumers. Now, the any point that is on total utility too is not attainable given our production possibility can. We cannot achieve any point there. So, TU1, we've got point E1 here. At point E1, and I'm just saying, at point E1, at E1, MRPT is equal to MRS. And then if I draw a line here of tangency, and this line, this is TT, and I call it a budget line. Therefore, it's also going to be equal to the ratio of prices. Price of lux divided by price of neck, which is the slope of the budget line. So therefore, at this point, all the, the what do you call them, the slopes are equal. You can see that. The slope of matter and rate of product transformation, the slope of isoquant, the slope of indifference curve, and the slope of the budget line. They are all equal. So, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to look at how do we equalize the marginal product of labor. Now, the first one that we did it was within the firm. That's the first uh, 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 rule. The second rule now is between two firms. So we've got firm one and firm two. So if you look at this, now you will see that now firm A is utilizing labor and this firm is also utilizing labor. And then the marginal product of labor, the marginal product of labor. So I'm just going to draw it like this, draw it like this. So, if you look at this firm here, and then you look at this firm here, this is the labor they are using. But now, if you look at this, and you say, the marginal product of labor here is 20 for firm 2, but it is 10 for firm 1. So you can see that now for firm 1, marginal product of labor is less. So what does that mean? It means that people must be moved from FEM1 to FEM2, where marginal product is, is higher. So in that case, we reduce the workers here, and we can see that when we reduce workers here, labor here, now marginal product of labor goes up to 15. And then we come and increase them here. So now, the, the, the workers that are working in here now, we must transfer them to FEM2. So when we get here now, we are increasing workers here. And then when we increase them, marginal product of labor, you can see now, it is going to go down and then to 15. So you can see that now eventually the two will be will be will be will be the same. But the bottom line here is that you must move the workers from where they are less productive to where they are more productive. And then you keep on doing that until the point of equal equality is, 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 is reached. Now you understand that. That's that is our rule two. And then this rule two, remember I said is between the fence. It's not within the fence like the first one. Now, rule number three now is we are going to use, it's, it's still between fence, but now we are going to use the production possibility curve. Okay. So now, production possibility curve for firm one, production possibility curve for firm two. So you can see that. So this is what? Neck lax. Neck lax. Right. So, Suppose now these firms are producing the same quantities. Now they're producing 50 luxuries, 100 necessities. Sorry, the other way. 50 necessities, 100 luxury. 50 necessities, 100 luxuries. So what is happening here is 
we have to measure the slope here, measure the slope here. And remember the slope is called the marginal rate of product transformation. So if the slope, if we want to draw the slope here, we must draw the tangent line here. And then we must come and draw the tangent line again here. So now this is the, 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 the slope, the slope. So now if the slope here appears to be two, and then the slope here appears to be one. Now it means what? It means now the slope that is two is bigger. So therefore we must flatten it. So it means that we must move it to the left. So now it will be some point here. And then suppose now I move to this side, to the left. Now it means I must reduce the production of luxuries. And then I must increase the production of necessities. So therefore, if you look at this firm one here, it must specialize in the production of necessities. But now firm one two here, this one, the slope is one. So if it's one now, it means one. We must make it bigger. So how do we make the slope bigger? We must make it steeper. So now we must move it to the right, not to the left, to the right. So I'm drawing the other line here. And then this tangent line now is somewhere there. And then that will help to increase the slope. And then how do we increase this slope here? We reduce the production of necessities. We increase the production of luxuries. So, this will help because if this point here, here, if we point here now, the slope is 1,5 and then the slope even here is 1,5, then the two are equal. Then we have achieved the two. And I think this is going to be a very long lecture now. Let me just end it here for you to digest it nicely because you need to really sit down and listen and listen, listen many times until this makes sense. So, guys. Combine this with the stuff that we've been doing um, in, in class and I hope that it will help because this will help. It will be some sort of a revision. And on that note, I would like to thank you very much. And, 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 and I believe that now next time when you do not understand, you go to my Facebook um, uh, uh, um, uh, account and you will see there I have the email address where you have to email me if you do not understand. Thank you very much, guys.